There are a number of fun ways to show the two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen being the ideal. Well, once the students have balanced their equation and they recognize that, sometimes people will do oh, hydrogen balloons and things like that. Well, I remember seeing Bob Becker explode an egg using hydrogen, kind of like a Pringles can demonstration, but the important thing was making the switch over to using eggs. Well, I'm a firm believer in if a little is good, a lot should be even better. And as luck would have it, they sell these at certain times of the year. And the moment that I saw this, I thought, hydrogen and oxygen. What an outstanding opportunity to demonstrate a large-scale hydrogen-oxygen explosion. My students come in on the day that they do fuel cells and eggshells, and they see me dressed kind of like this. And available from, from uh, hardware stores, nothing says buckle your seat belts, enjoy the chemistry experience today, quite like greeting your students at the door wearing the hard hat. Jokes like, gotta be careful, grades are falling, etc., etc., really lighten the mood and tell the students you're having the time of your life. What I've done here, and this is purely to show them what they're going to do on a much smaller scale. I have no intention of trying to fill this with hydrogen and oxygen because that would not be safe. And I'm not, I want to enjoy my teaching career, not leave early. What I have here is simply a one liter bottle uh, that I've put some water in. I've labeled it H2 another one liter bottle that I've labeled O2, and it has water. Up here, you'll see some pipette stems that I've cut off and pushed through the cap, purely for show. But boy, do I have their attention at this point, and they haven't even done anything yet. In the bottom of the egg, I've drilled a small hole. Again, I know where I'm taking them, and I want them to see the key details of today's experiment. This hole, okay, I would hold it like this, and I would say, I am going to go right on top of here, and I'm going to put some hydrogen in here. After I've done that, then I'll slide over, and I'll put some oxygen in there. Once I have done that, hopefully in a two to one ratio, I would move over to the launch pad and position this thing so that the speaker wire, if you can zoom in, the speaker wire goes through the hole in the bottom of the egg. Then, once I've got the egg positioned there, I step over here, warn about the loud sound, and push the button. That's the easy procedure. The hard part, or what requires the advanced planning, really involves getting the eggs prepared for the experiment. So I'll move this out and I'll show you how we do this. It starts with an egg, and there are a number of ways that you can blow out the eggs. The neatest little device is this little blast fix device, which you can find uh, a lot of times the Ukrainian egg decorating. If you search egg blower uh, online, you actually can find this little substance. It consists of like a syringe needle and a little bellows type of thing here that will blow out the egg. So with this, here's my beaker. I've also got a straightened paper clip here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a small hole by twisting this in, like so. So there's a small hole and then I'm going to use the paper clip to stir up the yolk 
And this, anytime you use an egg, and with yolks and all kinds of puns come to mind, and feel free to enjoy that with your students. This little device then is inserted through that hole, and we then start to blow out the insides of the egg. We need to do this because that's where the hydrogen and the oxygen are going to go. And that's how you blow out the egg. I like to have the students blow out the eggs on one day, and then we come back and we perform the experiment on the second day. So I've got some other eggs that I've already blown out over here. It's difficult to estimate when, you've per when you have the perfect amount of hydrogen and oxygen. I'll put hydrogen in first, so I'll put that there. But what I've done is I've added some solid zinc to the bottom of this container, okay, and I've weighed that out, three and a half grams. I've also measured in advance for my, hydro or for my oxygen generator approximately 0.1 grams of the yeast. Okay. My oxygen generator, my oxygen generator will use yeast and the 3% hydrogen peroxide. 3% hydrogen peroxide, I can pick that up at a grocery store along with the yeast and I'm off to school ready for a good time. The hydrogen generator has the solid mossy zinc at the bottom, three and a half grams, and I'll use two molar hydrochloric acid to generate my hydrogen. Having a student lab assistant with me, we timed about how much it would take, how long it would take rather, to generate a two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen inside the egg. It turns out, using the conditions described here and in the handouts, uh, that we need 15 seconds of hydrogen and about 15 seconds of oxygen. It's important to note, though, that it's still a two to one ratio. We need twice as much hydrogen as oxygen because of the balanced chemical equation. We can show it visually this way. I need two of the hydrogen molecules for every one oxygen. And if we follow the 15 seconds of each one, we should achieve that perfect ratio, hopefully. We'll see what happens. This, is a this has the potential to be a dangerous experiment because of the loud sound. As a teacher, I'll warn my administrators, you're going to hear loud things. I'll also talk to the custodial staff. Generally, I apologize one day in advance of when you come in tomorrow to clean my room. You'll see eggshells all over the floor. I'm sorry about that, uh, but I do promise I'll show the custodial staff exactly what the students got to do. Um, I like to use ear protection like this. Uh, you can buy this from a number of different places. Uh, the ear protection that I use, I like the, the earmuffs simply because if you do the smaller ones that fit inside the ear, the students may not realize that you have on ear protection. So by doing this, in my opinion, it really sends the message He's not kidding when he says that this can be loud, okay? I would tell the students they need to put their palms over their ears because this, if we hit the right ratio, we'll know it, and so will you. Hydrochloric acid goes in. I've got 40 milliliters already measured out. We're going to let that go for just a moment. We can start to see some of the bubbles forming. Ah, uh, yes, there it is. I've got a little pipette stem on top here so that that way it directs the hydrogen out the top of the chimney. Okay, and it will allow me to put the egg on top and collect the gas like so. We're going to let that go. 
lots of little bubbles. And actually, as the zinc oxide uh, coating is uh, reacts, uh, it reacts faster and faster. So the hydrogen generator gets better over time. The oxygen generator tends to go much faster. The, the yeast serves as a catalyst, and that will help to break down, uh, facilitate the decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide. So I've got my hydrogen generator going, and I'm going to add my 40 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide. Swirl that around, and I'm going to start producing oxygen almost immediately. Over here, where I'll be firing the egg, I have a speaker wire connected to a barbecue grill igniter, and that's going to send a spark from one wire in the overall speaker wire to the other. And that spark provides what we like to call the activation energy needed for the hydrogen and oxygen to react. So, with my hydrogen generator working nicely, my oxygen generator working nicely, I think we're ready. I'm going to put my ear protection on. Definitely must absolutely positively have a safety shield for this. Absolutely critical, and hopefully you'll see why. My egg and I need 15 seconds of each gas. Over to the hydrogen or oxygen. over here, and I'll fire it on the count of three. This slides over. One, two, and three. Firing! Not bad. Let's try that one again. I think we can even do better. And again, we'll go on the count of three. One, two, three. Firing! There we go. A quality two to one ratio. Now, if you think about this, it's important to emphasize to our students safety, safety, safety. The way it works for me in my classroom is to say, I want to do this with you folks. It's a very, very fun activity. I can do it as a demonstration, but in my advanced class, I would love to open it up and have the students do it. But they do need to recognize that they can hurt themselves or others if they don't warn others. In my classroom, I have about 12 pairs of these so that the students can protect themselves because it's very, very difficult, as you can imagine, to try to push the button while you're cupping your, your own ears and it just, this is definitely the way to go. Warning the administration. Sadly, we have to do that because of the, the way things are in the world. Um, but it is also fun to say to your principal, while you're in between disciplinary issues, if you want to come down to the chemistry room, you'll have a chance to blow up hydrogen and oxygen in an egg, and that may be the high point of your principal's day. Uh, and I know that my students always get excited when they see the principal in actually doing some chemistry with them. 
Um, lots of places that you can use this in the chemistry curriculum. Balancing equations is certainly one. Something that I know that we sometimes struggle with in the world of AP chemistry, hey, how do we have enough time to do labs? An activity such as this offers many, many different opportunities. From the activation energy here, many times we teach that concept, endothermic, exothermic, um, the use of a catalyst to make a reaction go faster, a decomposition reaction to produce oxygen, a single replacement reaction to produce hydrogen. In the advanced courses, the student should be able to actually tell me what is going on in those react or inside each gas generator. In a first year course, I'll give them the equations, but they have to do some calculations with that. Two to one ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, a very, very memorable type of experience for the students. My students get very creative. They're allowed to decorate their eggs. I'll never forget the student who always holds a special place in my heart because we, we blew out the eggs on a Monday. He came in Tuesday and said, I think I've got the ultimate way of decorating my egg. I said, wow, what is that? You know, what, what? Mr. Bracken, I went to the yearbook. I have photocopied your staff picture, and I will tape it to the egg. And I said, is this some sort of voodoo type of thing or what? I, so he was able to literally explode my head. And uh, for years, it's been several years now, and each year he talks about, are, are you still exploding the eggs? Remember when I blew up your head? Uh, great fun with that. So I would encourage you to try it, at least as a demonstration, uh, because it certainly does create a very memorable experience for you and your students.